He's coming. Oh, I can hear it. I can hear it. It's, it's chasing us. Where are we going? Where are Help, we going? I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Where are we going? Oh my god. Tony, don't. Tony. Riley, 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 Riley. I'm at the speaker. Oh my god! Oh, oh. My god, T, Hello. what is wrong with us? Something here, what's that? Oh. Tony! You just killed us! Tony, you stole a landmine! <laughs> you killed us all! It was so it was! Lethal Company is a 2023 co-op horror game by Zekas. It takes place in a retro-futuristic post-apocalypse where players take on the role of contracted employees working for a corporation named The Company, collecting scrap from abandoned industrialised moons while having to avoid traps, environmental hazards and monsters. It was released as an early access game on October the 23rd, 2023. Lethal Company is played only from a first-person perspective. Players are tasked with collecting scrap from abandoned industrialised moons to meet the company's profit quota. The game offers a balance between risk and reward, with a focus on exploration, survival and strategy. It is characterised by a realistic and brutal atmosphere, where players can face intense situations, including dismemberment or decapitation via creatures, traps or environmental hazards. Players must monitor their stamina level and weight carried visible on the heads up display as stamina can be depleted by sprinting, swimming and carrying objects. They can gain money from selling collected scrap which can be used to purchase items using a terminal console inside their ship. Players can also collect these items without having to buy them. Items like flashlights can be used to navigate through dark areas. Melee weapons such as a shovel or a stop sign can be used to fight hostile creatures. Stun grenades will stun enemies when thrown, and a ranged weapon called a zap gun, that acts as a taser and immobilizes the enemy temporarily. A walkie-talkie to communicate with other players outside of proximity chat and ship decorations. The game offers seven different hazard levels in total, depending on the respective moon, which dictates what type of creatures there will be and how many enemies the player may encounter on the moon. There is additionally a rank system that depends on the player's skill and success in missions. Lethal Company has received critical acclaim on the storefront Steam, topping the platform's global top seller list. Kelsey Raynor of VG247 noted that the game might not look like much given its grisly cell shaded graphics, but fans are wholly obsessed with Lethal Company and its gruesome aesthetic is clearly just another part of its charm. Gabriel Moss of IGN said, its co-op loot hunts already managed to transcend its limited content and missing systems, and that Lethal Company already instills a sense of wonder. As of today's date, the game has a 98% positive score on Steam from over 100,000 reviews, which makes it the highest rated game on Steam. In short, each game is comprised of a run. Each run consists of three days in which you must collect your quota. If you meet this quota within the three days, you can move on to your next run, where your quota will increase. If you fail to meet the quota or die too many times, you will be fired and have to start over. That is the core gameplay loop. It sounds simple enough, almost a little too simple, right? While the game is very basic at this stage, technically it's still in early access and the developer is promising to keep adding gameplay features. Adding things like graphical, gameplay and UI improvements will certainly be welcome to the hundreds of thousands of players the game currently has. Now, you will start with a small amount of money to start your adventure. This can be used for things like walkie-talkies, torches, ladders, weapons, etc. You will then use the console to choose your landing zone. These are listed in groups of ascending difficulty. The first three are the easiest and are free to travel to. The second two up the difficulty factor, but they are still free to travel to as well. The third group up the enemy hostility, making them very dangerous. 
the payoff being the loot is the most valuable. These planets do have a cost to travel to, so they're probably more suited to later runs when you have a bit of wealth behind you. Once you have chosen your planet, your workday will begin at 8.02am. You will then have until midnight to go out and scavenge for parts. As it gets later, more and more monsters will appear in the world, making things a lot trickier to get back to safety. If you are not back by midnight, your autopiloted ship will leave, ending your run. The game allows up to four players. You can all go out looting together, or you may choose to leave a teammate back at the ship, who can guide the adventurers through use of the ship's map and walkie-talkies. Once you leave for the day, you will encounter randomly generated dungeons. The game features proximity chat, so staying near your teammates will generally yield the best results. The proximity chat is one of the game's best features, and it can lead to many hilarious moments. You alive? See you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't shut the door. You did shut the door. I did, I shut it. Tony, you're Tony you safe. Like Tony doesn't. <laughs> Tony, no, no, Tony, no. no. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. Once someone in the party dies, they can no longer communicate with their teammates and will wait in death chat until someone joins them. This works really well, as you are never entirely sure if someone is gone or just out of proximity reach. It adds a layer of creepiness when you start to realise that you're on your own. Those in death chat can still watch and hear everything you're saying, which can also lead to some hilarious situations. There's a... Once you have collected enough loot, you will return to your ship. You'll drop all of your loot and begin the next day. Once your three days are up, you will gather everything together and deposit it into a wall. You will then ring the bell for it to be collected, hilariously by what looks to be a squid arm. This can also collect you if you are standing too close. Ring the bell and run is the safest option. If you have met your quota, you will be able to continue your run. If not, you will be fired and your run is over. That's the gist of the whole game at this point. While the game does indeed feel very bare bones, there are some genuinely funny moments to be had with friends. It's also very challenging and has a feeling of accomplishment when you succeed on a run. Given the game's low cost on Steam, currently 14 Aussie dollars, in my opinion it is decent value for money and with the promise of features being added, this value can only increase over time. I wouldn't particularly recommend this game if you do not have friends to play with you. There is a party search function, but in my experience this resulted in players either AFK or not communicating, which is vital in this game. Overall, it is a big thumbs up for those with friends that also own the game. I would look elsewhere if this isn't the case. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. We will see you in the next one. Cheers.